Okay folks, um, we're looking at furthering this tutorial, this block cycle tutorial by adding on to the original three layers that we've created in the previous uh, video tutorial. So we have our sky, our ground and our template and what we're going to do with this is use this template in order to be able to generate our own character. So I'm going to start off by creating the head. If I create a new layer, um, and what we're going to do is we'll just call that head just now. Remember, extremely important to make sure that you're naming all your layers, and uh, particularly when you start expanding on the animation, I have to make sure that the, the order of them, the hierarchy, um, is correct. We are going to begin by uh, generating a head. Now, I'll just do this quickly um, and roughly for you. I'm just going to use an old tool. Pale skin color. Zoom in. And we'll just hold down shift to constrain the proportions um, and, and make sure that it's perfect circles if that's what you're planning and creating. And I'll just get one. Using the selection tool, we can. Okay, so very basic, but there's um, the head that I need for my character. Now you'll notice that if I zoom out and grab this scrubber across the timeline, what's happened is I've generated the image on the first frame. And it's now been stretched across eight frames, similar to the ground in the sky, which means it's static in terms of its uh, the positioning throughout the course of the animation. Okay. Now what we're going to do is make sure that we change this for each frame to match it up with the, the head of the template layer. So what I'm going to do is just double click to select all of these frames. And similar to what we've done with the template, we're going to um, separate them all. Instead of um, converting them to blank keyframes, if I right click, I'm just going to convert to keyframes. So that it keeps the information and it's going to allow me to edit each individual frame in terms of its position or properties. I zoom in. Click on the second frame, you'll notice that it's highlighted everything. I can use the arrow keys on the keyboard and just make sure that I'm lining that up correctly with the, the template layer. We'll do that quickly for each of these. So I'm just using the arrow keys just to try and get it as accurate as possible. And now if I'm to grab the slider, it's much better. My head is now moving in position with the rest of the body. Now I'm going to lock that layer. I'm going to generate a new layer. And this is going to allow us to generate the clothes for the character on the body. Uh, so we'll call it clothes, as he will be clothed, I'm not speaking. Okay, now similarly, um, we're going to convert these to blank keyframes. Now the difference this time is that we can repeat the process that we've just done with the head. Reason being is that each frame for the body is different in its position, whereas we can kind of get away with using the, and reusing the head because it's not changing shape or direction or turning or anything like that, so we can get away with that. So we're going to just double click to select all of these, right click and convert to blank keyframes. Okay, now I'll start off with one. I'm not going to do all of this for you because it would make this tutorial um, far too long. There's a series of ways that you could go about um, 
differentiating the, the clothes of the character. You've got the line tool, you've got your pencil tool, you've got your brush tool. Um, I'll use the line tool to begin with. Now what I tend to do is I change the, the stroke colour for my um, for the line to something that I can see, especially when I'm working over the top of this. So I'll give you an example of how you can use the line tool. And what you might want to look at is making sure that you've set up the snapping options um, when using this tool. And, uh, for, for two reasons, I mean, you may prefer to work with them on or off. But the snapping tool, particularly with using a line tool, is going to make sure that all your lines are joined up. Um, if you go to view, you have your option for snapping. It's currently turned off at the moment um, for me. Now, I'll just draw a line across here. Now remember with your line tools, uh, or sorry, you know, when, when you've generated a line, whether it's from a pencil um, or using the line tool, you can use your selection tool to then edit and curve these lines. You can also move the points. Okay. So I can zoom in here and I can look at trying to edit the lines that I've drawn or created. Okay. Now what we'll do is I'll just zoom out for you and I'll repeat the process however this time I'm going to use the pencil tool and you have a series of different modes that you can use. I would recommend in this case using a smooth which is what it's going to allow the, the line to do is to try and snap or automatically curve for you. So I'll give you a wee example. So using the pencil tool I'm just going to draw around the body here and you'll notice that that kind of just snaps and curves out. Similarly to using the, the line tool, we can then edit this to suit. Okay. Um, another tool that you could use is the pen tool. Um, I selected the pen tool and I'm just going to try and draw a line down here. Now, how the pen tool works is a case of clicking your points and it will follow along. Now the difference for using the pen tool to the line tool is that you will be able to convert or edit your shapes using your Bezier handle. So you can use a convert anchor point tool which will allow you to then work with handles to curve the lines. Now we're, when you're using the pen tool the best way to go about using it is by um, is by making sure that you use as little points as possible. Sitting clicking away is going to add far too many points. It's adding information to the document that's needless, and also makes it a little bit more complicated for you to be able to to edit. Okay. So there's um, three different ways I've been able to create the outline. Now again, I've done it green um, so that I could see it against the, the, the template layer. If I was to select everything I've created here, and you'll notice it's selected by the dimples on the screen, you can simply just go to stroke color, change it to black, or whatever color you would prefer. Now with these being closed shapes, I should rightly be able to fill this color that I wish. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool here and select the skin colour, so the same skin tone, and click in place. Now it doesn't seem to be recognising that, that can be for two reasons, sometimes it's, the flash can be quite tricky. One reason may be that because I hadn't put on the snapping, these lines haven't fully joined up or connected, even though they look like they have. So sometimes zooming in and making sure that they're, they're okay and moving them um, will make a difference. Um, sometimes it can be as trivial as just zooming right out and then trying again with the paint bucket. If that still doesn't work, you have this option here of closing large gaps. So I'll select that and try and fill it, and there we go. This allowed us to, to fill the, the closed shape. And remember, you must have closed shapes so that the paint will go in place. Okay, think of it as being a border for stopping the paint from, from spilling out. So there we go. You could continue to do so. 
uh, or to, to continue to create the, the rest of your image on this layer. Um, once you're happy with that, you get the laborious task of going through each layer. Now what's extremely important um, is that A, the, the, there's continuity throughout your your animation, okay? So um, you want to make sure that you're taking your time with each frame and that we're not going to see like the lines wobbling or shaking or um, starting as if you're starting to lose interest and um, you may start to lose the, the will to live but you know you're in the wrong game if you're um, if you're serious about animation you're going to have to take it serious and make sure that you're taking your time across um, each of these frames when you're developing them. Um, the other thing to take into consideration is making sure that the colours that you, you use, for example, I've used the same skin tone as that, that are used in the face. Um, what is useful is building a, a separate layer, which may be your colour palette. So I'll just call this colour. And I'm just going to leave this so that it runs across all the frames, but it may well be that I just draw there's my skin tone and say he's got a pair of jeans on later on as this colour. Um, and the top is perhaps red. Okay, now what's going to happen is that any frame that you go into, they're, they're there, so you can just use the eye dropper bolt and then colour select them and drop them in place until you have a fully um, clothed character. And what, that's, what that will mean once you've fully finished that is that you can get rid of, delete this template layer, and you will be left with your character. Um, and I'll show you a fully final example of that um, in one of the, the last videos.